So thanks for joining us. Um, like I said, we've tried to do a Zoom every couple of times a week on a Monday and a Friday. Uh, and I thought rather than listen to my boring voice, then I'd bring in somebody who's a little bit more current and relevant. Uh, and we've got Cameron Steele on from, uh, from Durham, which is brilliant. So Cam, thanks very much for your time, mate. Really appreciate it. No worries. Thanks for having me. It's probably your, nearly your bedtime, is it, mate, over in Perth? Oh, well, well past my bedtime. <laughs> Well, past your bedtime. So if you didn't know, Cam's, um, well, well, we'll go into that a little bit. I'm going to do it in the, the style of the podcast that I've done in the past, and we'll just give Cam a few questions. He can spin us a few stories and maybe do an impression or two later on, and we'll, we'll go from there. But um, Steely, just talk the, the guys through your the start of your cricket journey, where it kind of started and how you're a bit more mixed up than me even. Um, so, well, start the cricket journey didn't start until a bit later on. Um, I was born in the United States, so my mum and dad were working in San Francisco at the time. Uh, and yeah, lived there for the first three years of my life. Um, mum and dad then moved to England. They're both English. Um, and we, I spent my childhood in Somerset, so I played my junior cricket for Somerset until about under 13s. And then um, my parents decided to moved to Perth in Western Australia where, where they are now and the room that I'm in now is my parents' office. Um, and I played um, cricket at high school there and then for, for juniors for, for Western Australia. Um, and then after that, um, once I finished school, decided that I wanted to study in Durham, did history at Durham Uni and, and decided to, well, I signed my first professional contract with, with Middlesex while I was at Durham Uni. And um, after graduating, I, I got released by Middlesex, sadly, but then got picked up by Durham, where I still play. So, yeah, that's Beautiful. it in a shortened version. Very, very short version. Uh, talk to the guys a little bit about what your the cricket at school was like for you. So you went to, went to a private school in Perth um, and still play a lot at the moment with your mates at your, at your club side. Yeah, so I, I went to Scotch College in Perth, which is a small boys' school, um, which was which was good for some reasons, bad for others. I'm sure you boys can uh, relate to, but um, no, it was it was great fun. So I had a I had a coach there called Mike Hirsch, who is um, a very old school coach. I'm guessing a few of you boys know Hershey from Durham School or around the traps in the northeast. But um, yeah, it was brilliant working with him um, all through high school um, and playing my grade cricket at Clement Edmonds, which has been a very successful club in, in Perth grade cricket for the last sort of 10 years. So I've, I was lucky enough to play with some some very good players and still do. So guys like Nick Hobson, Tim David, um, Joel Paris, all sort of playing big bash cricket. Coach Jim Allenby here, who played for Glammy, Leicester and Somerset for years. So um, we've got a real good group. Uh, Matt Kelly as well is one of my best mates from school. He plays for Scorchers and WA. So very lucky to grow up with a strong group of cricketers and, and sort of help each other along the way and, and um, sort of still play and stay in touch together now. Fantastic, mate. So from, we'll, we'll go back. So from school, you, you studied a little bit over here and decided that you were going to study full-time in the UK. Um, how, did, how did that work out for you at Durham Uni? And then talk to me around how Middlesex picked you up. So basically, when when I finished school in Perth, I, I I wanted to I wanted to explore the idea of studying in the UK. Study's always been important to me, and um, and I've always enjoyed reading and history is sort of a, a bit of a passion of mine. Um, nerd alert! But um, I basically just finished school and thought I'll apply to Durham Uni, see how we go, and if I get in, then great. If I don't, no worries. Might stay in Australia or whatever, and. To my surprise, I managed to get into Durham Uni and just sort of had a bit of a chat with my parents and and I knew that I had an opportunity to go play some second team cricket in, in England for Somerset at the time. They'd stayed in touch throughout my time in Western Australia. Yeah. So I decided that that would be a good option for me to play the summer in second team there and then head to head to Durham and, and do history. And, and that was what I chose to do, which was then to sort of go down the professional cricket route in in England. Um, I played that season of second team when I was, I uh, must have been 17 at the time for Somerset. And um, I got offered a summer contract by them and by Middlesex, but 
at the time there was a coach at Somerset who wasn't very keen on people going to university, which was fine. That was his style. But um, Middlesex were very keen on guys going to university. So they offered me three years of summer deals and really encouraged me to go and work with Durham Uni, go have a good time, go study hard. And, and that was that. So that really fit with what I sort of believed in and what I thought would be best for my cricket and for my life. So I decided to go do that. Who, who was your coach at Durham Uni at the time? Graham Fowler. Um, I don't know if any of you guys know Foxy at all, but he's top man, um, played a lot for England throughout the 80s, I think maybe 90s as well. But um, top bloke, was coach of Durham Uni for years. Um, an incredible man, got some great stories, um, especially about him and his nights out with uh, Surya or Lord Ian Botham now. <laughs> awesome, mate. And he's still involved at Durham now, isn't he? Like a consultancy kind of basis. Yeah, yeah, so he's big into his mental health um, campaigning now. He's he's struggled with his own mental health issues. Um, yeah. So he's he's brilliant in in that sense, and he's got some amazing amazing stories. Okay, brilliant. So on the on the mental health side, so you mentioned earlier that every, everything was kind of you were living the dream. Really, you studied and you would got your contract at, at Middlesex, and kind of that that all fell apart. Um, tell me how you were feeling at that point, and what you kind of did to to get yourself back on track. Yeah, so that was that was pretty tough to be honest. Uh, it was obviously a good a good three years uh, when I was at uni and at, at Middlesex. Very tough studying studying when you're whether you're at school at university and trying to become a professional athlete is seriously hard. Yeah. So that was a pretty taxing few years for me. And then Nick Compton coming off central contract at Middlesex. Sorry, central contract for England coming back to Middlesex. That didn't leave the finances for someone who hadn't done too much in the game to sort of get signed. So I kind of expected it, but it, it was very hard nonetheless, because it was probably the first time in my career that I'd really failed yeah. because I'd always, as you guys would know, as juniors, everything sort of on this trajectory in anything that you do, because you're young and you, and just everything sort of falls away. And then, yeah, so that was really hard to take. It sort of caught me, I knew it, would, it was a chance, but it, I got told in July of it would have been 2016. So it sort of caught me middle of the season, a bit off guard while I was watching the first team play, actually. And I got called into Angus Fraser's office and nice. had a sit down. And, and he basically told me that um, there was no contract for me. So look, it, for the first 24 hours, it was awful. Like, um, not a huge crier, but I, I, broke down in tears as soon as I got out and I thought, oh, my dream's over and this and that. But um, yeah, within 24 hours, I I sort of got over it pretty quickly. I mean, I had a, a lot to drink on the night, <laughs> as, as you do when, when stuff like that happens. But um, yeah, then the next morning I went, I, I decided that I wasn't going to be bitter about it and I was just going to make the most of the opportunity to be able to go elsewhere, essentially. So I think looking back, I took it extremely well. Um, obviously, I was seriously, seriously down about it for about 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. But I, I went to I went to the second team training the next day, and um, I think the coaches were impressed that I rocked up to training. But I just thought, you know what, I'm still on contract for a few more months. I'm in the shop window. They were the Middlesex were brilliant about it. They said I can play in the second team as much as as much as I wanted um, and I could they would do their best to get me a contract elsewhere so I just thought the the more positively I attack the situation the better and it definitely worked out because I mean within within a week or so I was in touch with Durham and and they were keen and and by by training and still attacking cricket with positive attitude and just treating it like the game that that we love it was um worked out really well for me and um, Durham signed me a few weeks later. Brilliant stuff. So we'll, we'll move on to your, your Durham your Durham stuff. Run us through the highlights of your, your Durham career so far. So there's some, um, yeah, there's been a few, <laughs> there's been a few highlights. It's been, I've had a great time. Like, I, th I think, I think the, the team highlights are always the best ones where you have a big win um, out of nowhere. There's, I think, in my in my first year, first and second years are when are my fondest memories. Probably, I think probably because I was a bit younger. Um, we were maybe winning a little bit more, um, but yeah. but um, 
my probably my fondest memory is is the game we played on TV against Nottinghamshire. It was a one day game, and they had they had a very very good team out there. Stuart Broad playing, James Pattinson from Australia, um, Harry Gurney was in. Yeah, they, they had, Alex Hales was was playing, and they had a they had a real strong side. And um, basically, we we pulled a win out of our asses <laughs> um, on TV. Pressure on. Um, Keaton Jennings had scored all our runs that year in one day cricket, nicked off first ball. Um, and yeah, me and my best mate, um, Graham Clark put on a few runs and, um, Paul Polling would then finish it off with a 25 ball 50. It was just a, an amazing win and, and sung the team song loud and proud, played in races. Um, and just had a, had a great time and big night out after it. And that was that. So that was, on a, on a, for a, from a team perspective, that that was up there, and beating Leicestershire and after following on was yeah. a was a pretty big one as well in twenty eighteen. Yeah, um, that was another one. Just came from behind and just kept believing. That was brilliant. Um, James Wheel taking seven for was was great to watch. Yeah. And um, for a personal point of view, I think I think the the, the double hundred was pretty good as well. <laughs> but um, but, but definitely my my fondest memories are are definitely team wins and and sort of having a beer or a chat in the change room after after a big win nothing like it absolutely nothing like it right oh mate we'll, we'll move on to your your beloved second home in the northeast so what makes what makes the northeast such a great place for you well obviously all the all the uni memories like started off as as my well as as my home from home basically um but then, then since then, it's just uh, the people. People in the northeast, uh, I feel are very similar to people from Perth and Western Australia. Very friendly. Everyone gets on with everyone, and and it's just brilliant. And people's passion for for cricket and for life is just is just meant. I absolutely love it. Um, it's obviously a beautiful part of the world, and yeah, can't fault it. Can't fault it. Great place. Apart from the weather, it's shy. Can we swap temperatures right now? Because I don't think it's been above freezing for about the last three or four weeks. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell. I got a bit sunburned today. Yeah, uh, just thirty-five. Yeah, yeah. We're copping ice storms and all sorts of crap at the moment. But yeah, yeah. we'll leave you with that. Thanks, mate. Um, <laughs> what occupies you outside of cricket? So what what keeps you busy? Um, so at the moment, it changes every now and then. But I'm I'm a bit of an an avid reader usually. So I I do I do read a fair bit. Um. But at the moment, it's a lot of coaching. So I'm, life's pretty normal here. Sorry yeah. to say to all you guys in lockdown, but it's very normal in WA. So I'm doing a lot of coaching at the moment, a lot of train, a hell of a lot of training. Yeah. So so that's taken up most of my time. But um, I actually recently started a little silent disco business with with one of my friends. So I've been uh, been sorting that out a bit. So on a more random side of things, if you if any of you guys ever need some silent disco equipment. You know where to come. Mate, you're going to have to explain that to me one day. Uh, uh, silent disco. What's yeah. Fun, to, you're, a bit, Ash, you're, a bit old, you're a bit old to enjoy a silent disco, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I write it down in simple terms for you. I appreciate that. Thank you, mate. <laughs> All right. Silent disco. Do you, am I getting any nods from the kids there, or, what, or do they know what's going on? Yeah, they, yeah, they're bit, well, there you go. Point proven, mate. I'll, I'll take that on board. Well, so if, for, for those who don't know, Silent Disco, basically there's yeah, three transmitters, three different music channels, and you can you have a pair of headphones on, and you can tune in to whichever channel you want and listen to whichever channel you want. And um, if everyone's, if there's about 50 people with the headphones on, listening to different music, you can take the headphones off and you hear people sing into one song and sing into another. It's quite fun. It's just a bit different. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Still had no idea what it was, but thanks for that, mate. Thanks for that. Um, so northeast, so you've you've managed to to be here for a, a few years now. Talk to us about the some of your favourite club grounds around the northeast. Well, obviously, favourite one has to be Ash Vegas, the yeah. home of cricket. <laughs> uh, just yeah, lovely blokes, my. My good mates from Ash Vegas, so I, that's my that's my favourite by a long way. But um, I, I've always enjoyed playing at South North for obvious reasons. Just a lovely ground, lovely pitch. 
Um, also have some great memories at Burnet Field. Um, and not necessarily my favourite ground, but no, nah, just like just some good times there. Um, had some good games, good battles, and yeah, really enjoyed it. And also Washy, obviously oh, Washy. Of course, that's probably yeah, yeah. off the field reasons more than on the field. Well, no, we won't talk about that. Yeah, we'll keep that, <laughs> we'll keep that to ourselves. Right on. Um, what about on the circuit? On the county circuit, where where do you look at and look at the fixtures and go, yes, I can't wait to, to bat there or I can't wait to go there? Of course, hard to go past Lords. Probably the same answer you get from everyone. But I think more just because the, Lord, the Lords lunches are just <laughs> unbelievable. So you know that you're going to be fitting in a few days of good desserts there. So, yeah, Lords for sure. Um, I think I think all the all the test grounds, if you see on the fixture list, is always exciting. So you see an Old Trafford, Trent Bridge, you can't you can't look past them as as great grounds to play at because they're generally the flattest wickets as well. So, so that helps. <laughs> Trouble is when you just see Chesley Street or Riverside, you just think, oh no, <laughs> it's going to be green. I'm going to nick off again. <laughs> um, we'll get but, uh, it's, you know, I, personally, I actually really like out grounds. My my, I think my fondest. Some of my fondest memories have definitely been places like Cheltenham for the Cheltenham Festival, um, Arundel, uh, Chesterfield. Yeah. Like the, the outgrounds of each of the counties are really nice. I, I think because you, you almost get it feels like it's a bigger crowd. Yeah. So there's, there's a nice atmosphere throughout the throughout the few days. So probably a slightly different answer so that you that you'd mostly get. But um, oh, cool. no. brilliant, mate. Right. Um, have any of you lot got any uh, any questions for for Cam? If he's if he's can, you can whack them in the chat, and I'll I'll ask away for you because I'm still not putting you off mute. Keep them clean, fellas. Yeah. Garrigan, Garrigan will be typing away at something. Anybody put anything? No. Oh, I've got it. How much better is Australia to living in England? Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say, well, I, I, th I think at the moment it's, it's quite a lot better. I wouldn't say it's um, in general, it's, it's any better. It's just different. Um, I think definitely at the moment with, with no restrictions um, from COVID and being able to have the normal freedoms of just of life is it's extraordinary having lived through the lockdown in England as well. It's, yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty mad how different it is at the moment. Um, but in general, Australia and England are very different places and hopefully you guys go and get to play some cricket or whatever you're going to play, cricket, footy, anything in, in Australia or somewhere abroad someday because it's really good to just experience different places, different people, um, and, yeah, just to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. So, yeah, I, I, I love it here, but I love it equally in the northeast as well. So, so I, I couldn't couldn't say whether it's better or worse apart from right now. <laughs> Sam's a, he's a wannabe Aussie. He's even starting to get the mullet in so the, the mullet's back in Oz isn't it at the moment so Sam I did, I did Sam I've been, that is rage that go on no, give, it, it, give it. us a little side <laughs> profile there we go look at that <laughs> that's, that's a good one no, <laughs> all, all of my all of my mates seem to have them at the moment so I'm thinking of thinking of going but nah not yet not yet that's for the young fellas yeah I'm getting, getting too old for that yeah mullets and silent discos mate Right, Roscoe, yeah. what have you got? where's the best to go in Australia cricket-wise? Very good question. Um, I think it depends what you it depends what you want. I think in general the grade competitions are pretty similar around around the places. I think they'd only start to dip off a little bit if you went to Canberra or Northern Territory. Yeah. Um, I'd say I'd say it depends what you want life experience-wise more than anything. I'd say Perth. Perth is a brilliant place. I'm a bit biased because I love Perth. Oh, I'm with you, mate. 100%. But um, but Perth's an amazing place to live. The beaches are incredible. Uh, people are lovely, but it's quite quiet. Um, and I'd say it's probably it's semi similar to the northeast in that respect. It's 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 quite quiet. But um, if you were to go, and that would be probably similar for Brisbane as well. 
but if you were to go to Sydney or Melbourne, you could have the big city life. It'd be like living in London. So if you're into that and less into your, um, well, less into your quiet weeks and whatever, then that'd be the place to go. But, but I'd say definitely, definitely anywhere to go in Australia would be, would be amazing for your cricket and, and just, it's just getting, it's just getting out there and, and, and getting stuck in really. Brilliant, mate. Who's the quickest bowler you've ever faced? Um, I would, I, th I think, well, other than um, Mark Wood, obviously, in the Nets, uh, I'd say Jofra Archer, when he turns it on, is seriously, seriously quick. Um, and But he he goes, he's so skillful that he doesn't need to bowl that quick all the time. Yeah. So sometimes you'll see in the test matches, he'll drop off to sort of 85, 86 mile an hour. Well, basically. I like, you know, sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But basically because he doesn't need to bowl quick. He's, he's so skillful with his in-swing, out-swing seam. He, he can just bowl mid-80s and I say just. <laughs> yeah. But he can, he can turn it up and down, which is why he's, he's so successful. But I think the quickest, there are two who stand out for me as the quickest I've ever faced where I've, I've been genuinely a little bit scared. Um, and that is, there was a guy when I was playing under 19s who is from Lancashire and I actually don't know his name, but they used to call him Rocket Man for, for <laughs> some, some reason. And um, he actually threw it and he, got, he got, um, got banned for throwing the ball, but he was absolutely rapid. This is, um, I remember Dan Christian, who plays for the Sixers now, was, um, was playing in that, in that game, not under 19s, it was a second team game for Middlesex, and said that that was the quickest spell of bowling he'd ever faced. And he had played all his career with um, Sean Tate as well. So, so that was that was pretty scary. And, and a, another guy, Duan Olivier, who actually cleaned me up a couple of years ago, um, hit me in the head in, when we were on a pre-season tour to, to Poch in South Africa. So I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but he plays at Yorkshire now and he, he's got some serious wheels. He definitely rang your bell, mate, didn't he? Certainly did. <laughs> they did. What about, so you, you mentioned Joffre with regard to the skill. Who's... Who's the one when you, you look at and you rock up and you think, oh man, this, this, this bloke's just going to nick me off or he's going to blow my pad off? Uh, generally every net session when Rushy's bowling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say there's one guy who's who's got me out loads. I probably haven't played quite long enough yet or against the same teams enough yet, but there's, there's guys like Tim Mercer playing for Middlesex so, that, so guys who bowl a little bit slower and just move them around that so yeah. you just think oh no, oh, no yeah man. what have we got Ed uh, your highest score so you mentioned your, your double hundred mate uh, yeah so high school was I got 224 against uh, Leicestershire in 2017 so that was that was a great day that was my yeah that was I was very pleased with that so um that was my second hundred for Durham, but um, I was in a run of very good form at the time and was lucky enough to sort of get dropped on, on about 50, I think, uh, down the leg side, keeper dropped me, but um, no, I managed to go on and make it a really big one. So I was very happy to do that and, and ended up batting for about 10 hours. So I think that's one of my proudest moments um, in cricket for sure. Yeah, and your whole family were over from what I remember, is that right? They were, yeah. So my my grandparents came, travelled from um, where they live in England, um, and then like my great auntie or auntie, whatever, grand auntie or whatever, and um, mum and dad were over from Australia, and my cousins were there. So it was a, a big steel reunion. In so the it was, it was of all places as well. Jeez. I know, I know. Grace Road, home of cricket. <laughs> Quality. Um, the mullet says, "Who's the biggest budger?" Biggest cricket budger that you know? God, I'll tell you what, you're up there, Ash. Me? Jeez. Yeah. Wow. Uh, biggest cricket badger I know in professional cricket, uh, Liam Trabascus is right up there. He's like oh, extraordinary how much he, how many people's stats he knows. Um, but in, in, I think the biggest badgers are definitely great in grade cricket over here or, or in country cricket. There's a few guys who I know from Albany who, if you guys know where Albany is, it's um, south coast of Australia and, yeah, big badgers over here. The question that I've got is from um, a guy called James Allenby. He says, can you talk to me about your flipper? 
<laughs> when's he where's he said that no comment <laughs> uh working on working on delivery yeah at the moment and um james allenby has been uh been trying to teach me the ropes of it as a as a pace as a pace bowler he you'd think he maybe he maybe shouldn't be but he's got a very very good flipper and i'm very jealous of it right i'll i'll let him know i'll let him know and i think last one before we get probably cut off on the uh on the zoom scale is difference in standard of cricket in england to australia um uh, probably a tough one that really yeah, it is a bit of a tough one. It's, I'd say there's not necessarily a difference in standard. It's just difference in levels and the way cricket's structured. Yeah. I'd say uh, it, it's different here, I think, because because a lot of state cricket, so your professional cricket here, Sheffield Shield, there are six six teams um, as opposed to the 18 professional teams there are in England. So so, the, so it's structured differently in that in that sense. So the professional teams yes are probably slightly stronger than than the professional teams in england but you obviously get some stronger teams in england that would really compete with with shield sides yeah um in terms of standard it's again it's different the pitches are so different here that you get you kind of have to bowl 80 85 mile an hour plus here in order to get enough out of the pitches whereas in england you can you can bowl 70 mile an hour and seem seem blokes out. So, and then by extension, Australian batsmen who come to England do really struggle as a result, as a result of the ball moving more and swinging more. So I'd say it's different in that sense, but um, I think definitely like grade cricket compared to league cricket is very different. And the standard is a lot higher in grade amateur cricket than it is in league amateur cricket in, in England. So if you're doing well in your league side, um, in the NEPL or whatever, I think that's you, that's about probably second or third grade in in Australia, and and people do definitely get a bit of a shock, especially English guys coming over to. Well, I can only speak from West, a Western Australian perspective, but guys who do come from league cricket to WA and play grade cricket do struggle a little bit to start off with and struggle to sort of find their feet where you're not the best player in the team and you've got to sort of, and guys come at you really hard and bump you for the first time. And it's, it is just different. The first grade, first grade cricket is, isn't like professional cricket, but it's very strong. Yeah, it is. It is. I hope that makes sense. That was quite a roundabout way of saying that. Well, I think it was a pretty good explanation. And I guess what you what you can find is if you, I remember growing up playing grade cricket in Australia at 16 and, and playing against four or five test players from Midland Guildford one day with Tim Zura and Tom Moody. And mm. it was, it, it was fun. It was, it was, it was a definite steep learning curve. Right, mate, we've literally got one minute left. Um, give us a couple of impressions that these guys might know. Uh, we might know Cameron Bancroft. I've got him. Um, so I don't really know why I want to use sandpaper with his massive hands. Um, don't know what else I've got for you. What about the coach? Uh, the coach? Yeah. Nah, too risky. Nah, do it, mate. Come on. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Come on, some fush and chops, some socks and seven. No, nah, no, nah, that's just that's just standard uh standard kiwi. No, we'll we'll leave that. Oh, you bottled that twice now. I'm not doing one of the coach. Nah, mate, weak. You want to play it? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Well, we'll leave it there, Steely. Um, thank you so much for your time, mate. And hopefully the guys have, have picked up a few things there, and if not, been entertained for half an hour. So really appreciate that. Um, no, if you luck, got any questions, guys, guys feel free to just if you got any questions, guys, just feel free to message. Yeah, for sure, mate. Thank you very much, Cam. For you, ugly lot. Um, I'll see you Friday. Cheers, boys. Go Cheers. Take it easy, mate. Yeah. Bye, bye, bye.